What is apparent charge? For me, explaining apparent charge is one of the most difficult subjects. Um, it took me days, weeks, probably months to fully understand what apparent charge really means. And now I'm trying to get this across to you in less than 10 minutes. So please allow me to do a lot of oversimplifications. And maybe in the future we have a possibility to do part two or maybe even part three to iron out the inaccuracies that I'm doing because of the oversimplifications. So, in order to measure partial discharges, we need a measurement setup. And behind me I've prepared something already. This is our diagram of a measurement setup. This is very close to what we see from the IEC 60 to 70. And uh, what do we have? We have a voltage source here, a high voltage source. Uh, we have a device under test. That's our test object. And we have a coupling capacitor here. And furthermore, we have our low voltage capacitance here. This is our capacitive divider in order to measure with our measurement instrument to measure partial discharges. And this one over here is very often called a measurement impedance. However, the majority of people I know, they call it a quadrupole. So, coupling capacitor, quadrupole, device under test. And now let's imagine for the time being that the device under test and the coupling capacitor are just a capacitance, a pure capacitance, no, no resistance, no, uh, no impedance in there. And let's imagine for the time being that they have around the same capacitance. Let's say, I don't know, um, a capacitance of maybe around um, 10 nanofarad, right? Around 10 nanofarad. So they have the same size or the same capacitance. So now let's say we have a partial discharge in here. And partial discharge, what does it mean? Only a small part of the insulation is being bridged, and probably not all over, but only a very small part. So let's say we have a void in here. Going to draw it rather big. And now, because the electrical field strength or the local electrical field strength with the, that we define to be critical is, um, is, um, is already surpassed, meaning we have a partial discharge here, and we have an energy transfer. Our electrical energy will be transferred to heat, sound, light, and probably a chemical reaction, the very one that we don't want to. So this means I just lost electrons. I just lost charge. So this means that my capacitance, it was just 100% charged, is no longer 100% charged because something is missing. So what is going to happen now? Well, since these two things are in parallel, um, they are not at the same level anymore. So the idea is, the idea behind measuring partial discharges because of charge transfer is that now we're going to have a current going from here. So this would be a current going from here to here to here and all the way around here, and then we would be able to measure it, right? So maybe the current, maybe the current could even look a little bit like that. We have seen something like that before. So if these two things are 100% same capacitance, then we are probably only be able to charge around 50% of what has actually been lost, because they want to be at the same level again. This, however, is only true if there's nobody else helping us to recharge. And um, as we know, a high voltage um, uh, transformer usually has a lot of capacitance as well. So therefore, we have to try to limit the charge transfer going in here, uh, at least for the time being, um, by means of, for example, a blocking impedance. And that is the reason why the IEC 60 to 70 states that there needs to be a blocking impedance in here. in order to at least hinder the charge transfer coming from here to here. So, what does it mean? It means we can never measure the real charge. We can only measure an apparent charge because of our test setup. And not only in part two, we're going to talk about that there are other issues as well. However, this is not the only problem. So first of all, a blocking impedance is not 100% perfect. So we're going to have a little bit of current going in this, in here as well. And furthermore, the object, unfortunately, is usually made out of metal. It is usually not the smallest one. And especially for, for example, in a laboratory, we have capacitances towards the wall. 
which means we have stray capacitance here. So this one has most likely a stray capacitance here and here and here to the to the ceiling of my room and here to the ceiling of my room. So now we are going to have charge transfer or we have a, have a current transfer from here as well, unfortunately. So now I already almost drew a picture where we can explain why we need a big coupling capacitor, but this one is for the parent charge only. Um, there is another part to it, and uh, we're going to talk about this in part two. However, there is one thing what we could do in order to actually take advantage of the fact that we already understand that current is coming here, is here, it's coming current from here and here. And the idea would be that we are taking our quadrupole from here and move it over here. So, let's put the quadrupole in. Let's connect our measuring instrument here. And now, we would have a much better measurement because we would get all of the charge transfer, not only the one that is in this part of my circuit, but this one as well and the other ones as well. So this is a really awesome idea. Let's do it. But we have talked about it in another video that this is not the easiest thing to do. First of all, if our device under test would fail, um, we could have a high voltage over here, meaning that we probably destroy our measuring instrument and let's hope that at least the person doing the measurement um, and the measurement instrument are galvanically not connected, so at least our, uh, our operator doesn't die, uh, but the most, uh, very often the measurement instrument might um, needs to be renewed uh, or replaced. Um, so that would be a possibility. Uh, there's another issue why we usually don't do that, and this is that our device under test usually has different capacitance all of the time. This, however, needs to be a capacitive divider, and the voltage value that comes out of here needs to be in the area that our measuring instrument is be able to talk uh, to uh, to take and actually to measure. So this is part one on how to explain uh, what a parent charge is, and there's a part two that you should look as well.